Welcome back to our conference videos on Interspeech 2021. And today it's already the last day of the conference. Oh no. Oh no, <laughs> already over. But it was really an exciting time. And also for today we have a couple of things coming up. So again, there's an exciting survey talk coming up and also a really cool keynote that we want to cover in this video. And then of course there's some additional things, right? So the student awards and also the closing ceremony mm -hmm. and also um so s since our um, interviews last night was so successful and then there are more coming up so we even got some additional spontaneous interviews that we didn't fit into the last video they were kind of taken rather late at night on the banquet but still i think this is something that is really valuable that we really want to share you so Looking forward to summarizing the last day of Interspeech 2021 with you guys. So welcome to our summary of the last day of Interspeech Friday. And I think we should start with the keynote, right? Which was yes. very good on language modeling and artificial intelligence. Yes. So this talk was given by Thomas Mikolov and um, the point uh, that I was impressed with the talk was that so um, we need to focus on developing new mathematical models um, with certain properties such as the ability to learn continually, so the continuous learning and without explicit supervision that will um, enable more generalizations to novel tasks. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, so in the classical statistical methods, we had this way of interpolating language models, word counts, and graphs, something where we could go much better on, into the understanding and the yes. generalization. Yes. And now with the deep networks and RNN type, LSTM type of language models, that's much harder. And he's right, we need new tools to do that. Right? Yes, so, yes. A very nice keynote and also compelling ideas that he's conveying there. Yes. Well, what else did happen? Uh, there is a wonderful survey talk by Alexandrina oh, Krista yes. Yes. on uh, child language acquisition studied with variables. So that has always been a problem if you want to collect audio with children, that it's very difficult. You need either microphone arrays or very bulky setups in order to be able to interact with the children and record their speech and speech development. And this is much better now with variables. So variables allow us a new access in order to see what sounds the children produce and at how the language is changing over the years. So this is a very nice technique. And yeah, Alejandra did a very Alejandrina did a very good job in actually summarizing this and the progress that has been made in the child language acquisition using variables in the field. Yes. And w did you attend more sessions, um, talks? Um, what was impressive? So I've, I've seen something on what I really am sometimes I was worried about is security and with all these new techniques where you yeah, can convert know, speech yes, into yes. each other yes. and the deep fakes and you have that in image processing but of course also in, in speech processing. New deep learning techniques allow to create tremendous fakes. So there was a very cool paper that is called RW ResNet, a novel speech anti-spoofing model using mm. raw waveform and was presented by Yushan Ma. And the cool thing is that he's essentially using the raw waveform, is using then a ResNet on this that creates essentially a res wavegram. And this kind of stronger feature extraction could demonstrate to be better in anti-spoofing detection and use that on the ASV proof 2019 data set. So I think that's very relevant work and something that really will help us to discover deep fakes and stuff like that. And in particular in the age of social media and you know all the fake news coming up, I think that's a very important topic. Yes, the anti-spoofing is, yeah. so. is it's a highly important topic. And also I like the, uh, it's a bit of a side topic. This was given by Yui Chen. And it's oh, I, I spotted this one. Yes. You spotted yes. this one? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So they had this neural network based approach to identifying speakers in novels. And now you would say, well, why would I want to identify speakers in novels? And they have the idea that they want to produce audiobooks. Yes. 
And obviously, if you take the wrong model for synthesizing the voice, then that is, of course, very difficult to listen to. And sometimes it's not clear who is saying what in, in novels, and you have to infer that from the context. So they're actually using a BERT type of model that is based on BERT, and they then adopt that for that specific purpose. And they achieve new state-of-the-art performance. So I thought it's a cool paper. I, mm -hmm. I, I never thought about this, but it's. But you, it's, you told me you have been reading audiobooks, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. you probably so, can relate to the. I, the, I like the, listening uh, to audiobooks. Yes, absolutely. yes, yes. So and, uh, yes. The application is is there. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Maybe that's why I like the paper so much because I like listening to audiobooks myself. Yeah, what else happens? Uh, yes, and then there was the closing ceremony and awards. So um, there were many awards, but amongst that, the best student paper um, were awarded. And it went to Anupama and Inghao and Piyush. Yeah, so I think that's very important. I mean, there have been numerous awards, and uh, there's there's new uh, ISCA fellows, there's ISCA medalists. I think the Hermanay was this this year. Uh, so all of them are well visible, but I think in particular the student papers are very well worth mentioning here yes. because it's good for the careers of the young res researchers. Yes. <laughs> Another thing that deserves attention is the young female researcher workshop, um, best paper for that, and it goes to Ivy Mock. So. Congratulations to all of the award winners. Yeah, it's also very important that this uh, Young Female Researcher Workshop is started or has been started a couple of years ago, and I think it's a very, very good um, resource to have young researchers connect and also give them the visibility and the credit they really deserve. So it's only a really, really good thing that is happening here in, in ISCA. Yes. Yeah, and uh, how did the banquet interviews go? <laughs> it was really fun. Like I, I was impressed how um, the researchers were actually um, interested in being interviewed so much, and I, I really uh, so it was another extension to listening to their papers. So that's that was really nice. Yeah, and so what's also nice is it's not just the researchers who get interested, but we actually managed to, to do some additional interviews also with the local organizers. Oh, yes. Oh, which yes. It was, yes, was very yes, nice. Yes, there was, this, is, this really, really deserves some merit because they really worked hard. And the hybrid conference this year, well, I think it was just I, I speckless. Absolutely. So the audio quality of these interviews is, is a bit oh, yeah. problematic because it's taken on the banquet and there's some a lot of background noise. I try to do my best in improving the sound quality, but still I find them really nice and I would like to share them with you. And yeah, it really gives you some kind of view, a peek behind the scenes of yes. what's happening at the conference and how difficult it actually was to set up this hybrid event, to have people travel, the pandemic, the regulations, the insecurity, all behind that. And yeah, we could give some inside view from all of these problems and how they managed it to set up this wonderful event. So I hope you also like these interviews. Yes, and I totally enjoyed it. And next year, I hope it will be um, really in person. With everyone. Yeah, so uh, this, this, I, yes. this speech was marvelous, but where are we going next year? To uh, Incheon in South Korea. <laughs> so uh, I happen to come from there. <laughs> so I, yeah, uh, so I really look forward to present nice papers there too. And yes, I really totally appreciate um, everyone who came to this conference and I told, I really um, am glad that I chose to go to the, uh, the conference in person. Absolutely. And maybe we have the chance to meet on next Interspeech in Incheon, South Korea. And I hope you have a lot of fun with the remaining couple of interviews. Interspeech 2021 was a really joyful event. And I'm very much looking forward to meet everybody again next year. So see you. 
See you. Hi, so I have the great opportunity to meet Romana here and she is the local organizer in charge of really putting this entire wonderful event together and I'm very glad that you have some time for us and I can't believe that you have solved all these problems with the hybrid conference, COVID, all these short-time changes and we still had this marvelous event. So what were the greatest challenges that you had to face, the, the biggest things that changed in the last minute? Well, thank you very much uh, also for your interest to speak with the, the organizers uh, of the InterSpeech 2021. Uh, there was, uh, to be honest, several challenges what we uh, have to solve and a bit very, in a very short period of the time. Uh, because uh, we are actually the agency, the professional congress organizer based in Prague, are an international, and uh, uh, we are already preparing this event from uh, 2019, from the period of inter-speaking grants, and uh, we prepared the event uh, till the May 2020 one as a in-person conference for almost 2,000 participants. The original venue was uh, booked uh, in the biggest uh, conference or fair trade venue in Brno, the uh, uh, Brno e Exhibits Expo. And uh, it was actually the first big challenge for us to reschedule, first of all, the venue because once the organizing committee have decided due to the COVID issues uh, we need to uh, prepare all the logistics in a completely different way and uh, we still believed in that time that several people from European countries mostly would be able to come and uh, we really uh, decided to go for the hybrid version and we believe and trust that somebody would able to come and uh, I'm really happy to see uh, this nice uh, and the smiling faces around me, the people, the people who really enjoying the time to spend uh, this marvelous uh, five days in Brno together. Is it uh, full of uh, energy uh, and uh, sharing experience uh, and knowledge here and people are really socializing and networking uh, during the during the breaks, uh, we have a very nice social events uh, uh, prepared for all of you here. And uh, so th this part is really uh, pleased me very much to see the real participants, of course. However, when it comes really to the true. statistics... In, in three days, I only saw smiling people here. So <laughs> everybody was happy, everything was very well organized. So really happy. And actually, this this uh, the percentage of the participants is uh, only thirty percent, thirty percent of uh, the participants of Interspeed, because the another seventy percent uh, participants are joining us remotely. So they actually have no chance to join us for the evenings, but we prepare for them uh, at least uh, memorable videos. <laughs> so hopefully they will see uh, see us tomorrow during the closing ceremony. Uh, so we try to do our best to really perform the hybrid making as much possible. Uh, uh, convenient for the remote participants so the the biggest uh, stone of, of all of this uh, hybrid was to create uh, a really stable and a sufficient virtual platform which uh, can really host uh, the scientific program of Interspeech 2021. And uh, as you all know, hopefully you know and you visited our platform uh, because the, the access uh, uh, has everyone who is registered and uh, one of the preferred uh, actually tool what uh, our company is uh, operating is uh, 
really tailor-made professional congress uh, platform which is able to host uh, actually this kind of difficult hybrid uh, sessions because uh, as you know we are having four uh, different oral sessions which are actually streamed uh, from the Brno uh, directly to the platform and there is another parallelly 104 uh, virtual sessions which are uh, running in the session called uh, Unify Poster Session where actually the authors of the papers, the post papers are running their own meetings where the participants uh, join uh, for an uh, un yes, uh, unlimited time actually the, the, the frame is actually two hours but the, the feature of joining these special sessions is that they are allowing to interact really uh, with the speaker and uh, we are trying to, to simulate really the situation they are standing around the paper author of the poster and, and uh, talking and discussing with them. So it was actually our goal to try to simulate the situation that there is a similar participants around the speaker. I must say this was really well made. And what I found in particular great is that if you look at the presentations, about half of the questions from the uh, offline sessions were from participants who were actually there, but the other half were from online participants. So they really engaged and it really worked to collaborate with people all around the world together. So this was really marvelous. Yes, to actually, it's, it's kind of really worldwide bridge which connect us, and uh, we are very closely, of course, also monitoring what is the what is the, the attendance of the virtual sessions. And I can say is that a very high percentage of the participants who are really staying as online and, and live and and. and uh, uh, They're actually joining the session. Yes, joining the session. And of course, uh, one of the advantage of this session is, or actually this mode, uh, what we have is uh, we try to adapt our schedule and time of the our session to also the different zones. We, we do our best, of course. We cannot uh, uh, serve every uh, region, of course. So that's why we try to do our best to upload or. Uh, make the recorded session available as soon as possible and it takes from 12 to uh, 16 hours but uh, we try to our best to actually really uh, provide the records to the other participants from different time zones uh, at least the record from the main sessions. You were really quick whenever we were done with producing a video all of the recordings were already in the online yes. system so this was also marvelous. Yeah. Thank you very much for these insights in the organization and all the background information. Thank it's you. a real pleasure and congratulations for hosting such a marvelous event. Yeah, tomorrow is the closing ceremony, so we have still an, another one and a half day. <laughs> so <laughs> let's speak tomorrow when we finish. <laughs> absolutely, but I'm absolutely positive that everything will go well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And we have the great pleasure to welcome Piotr and the nephew here with us. And they will tell us a bit about the conference, the organization here, and the research and also what kind of research you like best. Right? So, Peter, it says, uh, Peter, it, it says local. Here. It says local, even though uh, about that. About that in Switzerland, so yeah, I'm, I'm real local. local. <laughs> I'm real local. I was born in Brno. I know it pretty well. I think we are really happy to have it here. So it's uh, first time actually to have such a big conference. So uh, in Brno. Besides, of course, TSD is more like more local or more yeah, or the complete dialogue. Let's say and so on. So it's yeah. really cool to have people here, those you know, the great uh, researchers, including uh, 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 technology providers in the world. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's not as 
it's back three years back, but still we are happy that we went to Paris. It was the local experience. And I think that decision was uh, very, you know, very difficult to make three months or four months back, and no one expected what's going to happen eventually. But I think we are really happy that we made it. I think you can be extremely proud of what you yes, achieved today. It's so. such a great conference, and I think it, it can be a role model for future uh, speeches. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe with like more people coming in person and less people doing online, but I think what you put together is so seamlessly integrates the online and the offline crowd. It's amazing. Really great work. And, and the, the nice thing with the online is that it's also not as expensive as the in-person travel, so it may also make it more accessible to different countries around the world. Exactly. I think it's a really good to to so basically, all the feature the kind of hybrid because of all kinds of things, because of all the CO2 emissions, etc. Et People can decide whether they will like to travel. And what is interesting for me, for example, which I you know, didn't expect that even though it's hybrid and this mix of like creative person and online people works, even the technology works. You know, I, I think we are all surprised, I would say, well surprised in a in good way that we actually are here and there are people who are connected uh, right, uh, online and you work in the yeah, So I didn't expect that. I thought that there would be some challenges, some problems, and in fact, it really works. On them. Every other question that is asked is from the online participants. It's really cool. Oh, yes. The organizers are really good. Oh, it was excellent. It is really excellent. Yeah. We're, we're still making these videos here just um, you know, to make the people who cannot be here in person a little bit envious about the wonderful program we have to put together with this banquet and the wonderful food, the coffee, the coffee breaks. Oh, it cannot be any better. Yeah. I remember actually uh, 2019, I was there, I knew the guys who were there. It was really nice to organize a local place, like small town. Uh, I felt very well there, good food, good program, banquet. I think we are really close to that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.
And also that, that, that is like a little bit of a more diverse, uh, diverse, diversity. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time yeah. and that you are doing such an experimental thing with us. <laughs> YouTube video. Yeah, I, think I, think I think it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to me.